Yeah. Or someone would ask me the other day, she's like, what are you, I'm like, what are you going to do when you actually find someone really similar to you? Would you get along? I was like, gosh, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back. We're, we've got a pretty cool episode today with the 4am club with Gus and he is a founder of Gotcha for Life. And another thing that we're, we're going to learn about today is it's called Man Up. So Gus, first of all, uh, where'd Gotcha for Life come from? Yeah, so Gotcha for Life for me is a foundation I started about four years ago, boys. Um, it came off the back of a program I did on the ABC called man up and man up really challenged masculinity in this country and why we lose so many blokes every day to suicide mm -hmm. um and that was off the back of a mate of mine a real mentor a bloke that i really loved and adored who took his own life over 10 years ago now and uh he was a guy that you know i wanted to be really um he was very special to me my father had left the family home when i was quite young and i was sort of desperate for role models and um and Angus was that for me. And uh, when I found out that he had taken his own life, I just couldn't believe it. Um, and I sat in silence for years, never talking about it eventually. I started talking on my breakfast show on Triple M and a lot of people responded. Um, we thought that you just had to do jokes and have laughs and rock music and sport. And all of a sudden we realized when we were putting a show together every morning that people wanted something a little bit deeper than that. So we started talking about mental health and now what I call mental fitness more and more. Um, Man Up was made. Um, it's still available on, a on ABC iView. It's had over 75 million views around Ooh. the world. We gave it away to the world to watch. And it's not an easy watch, boys. It's three hours. It's very tough at times. It's very mm. emotional. I spent a lot of the time crying and just trying to work out why I felt the way I did. And why my friend had done what he did and I was angry and sad and it was a real education for me. And about that, I said, well, I can't stop here. Um, I really feel like it's my destiny to, to help more people. Um, so I started Gotcha for Life and that's been going, as I said, just over four years. We've fundraised about $5 million. We give most of that away to anyone working in the preventable space. Any, I think there's way too much money in treatment way too much money in crisis, that sort of level of mental health. So let's start talking about mental fitness and start normalizing the fact that it's something that everyone's going through and we should be able to talk about it more. Mm. Mm. And I, I like the way that it's phrased in terms of mental fitness makes it a very easy to understand process. So this is something we can work on. You know, it's something that we can, we can, we can make, you know, people love making workouts and they love training plans. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's one side of health. It's a whole holistic approach. And I think it's, 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 it just, it fits so well in terms of that mental fitness side of things. We can, we can improve it. We can set goals for it and we can do it yeah. together. That's exactly right. And like, if you walk into a group of people and say, I want to lose a few kilos, you watch everyone giving you this nice, positive advice going, mm. Oh mate, no worries. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? What about this food? What about this recipe? Oh, there's a 50% discount down the road at the local gym. Have you thought about this and that? Whereas you walked into a group and said, Oh, my mental health is so poor. It's not going well. Mm. People shit themselves. People go, what did, what did, what did you just say? Like, you don't say things like that. What if HR hear about that? They're going to bloody sack him or he won't get that job or he, she won't get that job. All of a sudden, if you just say, hey, I'm working on my mental fitness at the moment, I wouldn't mind some help. And people go, Oh, I know what you mean. It's on a scale between one and 10, just like our physical fitness. So where are the gyms for mental fitness? And they're out there. So we just need to normalize it, talk about it more, because whatever we do, we've done to this point is not good enough. And it's time to put a line in the sand and say no more. You know, I'm literally going to make a change within my own community. Like what you boys have done with this. You've been best mates forever. You're separated at the moment. Your relationships got deeper because of the situation. So you've done something about it. You've started a podcast and no doubt you're helping people. So that's, that's action off the back of an idea. Too much about awareness, not enough action around how we can actually fix it or try to fix it. So that, that's what I'm talking about with Gotcha for Life, looking at people that work in prevention and give them all the support they need. So what are some of the things people can do to improve their mental fitness? I mean, for me, Leroy, the most important thing is not worrying alone. 
you know, as soon as you don't worry alone, then you're telling someone about how you truly feel. And that means that we're not having all these daft ideas running around in our head. I mean, you boys are old enough to know if you just sat there for a whole day stewing over things, how many good decisions are you making? You know what I mean? <laughs> but as soon as you pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, Sam, I've been thinking about this. And Sam goes, well, I mean, I had that same thought and this is what I came up with. Or I, I read somewhere or... I heard something on some podcast and then all of a sudden it gives you all these different ideas and thoughts. That's, that's what you need. You need that information mm -hmm. rather than just coming up with stuff yourself. So I believe if everyone d doesn't worry alone, then that's a huge, a huge part of us getting down to what I'm hoping is zero suicides because one suicide's too many. So mm -hmm. for me, not worrying alone, telling someone how you truly feel, taking the mask off, taken off your uniform with at least someone in your life and someone that I call a gotcha for life friend, someone who's got your warts and all. They love you. They won't judge you. They'll just listen. They may not have the answers, but they end up being part of your team that will allow you to get on and, and, and get some sort of a resolution around it. And that, that, I believe, boys, is the most important thing you can do as a friend. It just takes your friendship to a different level. Mm, yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, especially... This year, it's been particularly hard for me and I was, I was finding it very difficult at times. And like you said, don't worry alone. I opened up a bit more and I told Sam, we had like a big discussion just about like how I felt. And it was like, oh dude, I feel the same way. And just yeah. even hearing that someone else is feeling that same way just made it easier. And yeah, like just normalized. It just didn't make me feel like, an, like just crazy. I don't know. It was really Correct. And it is. It's crazy. It's, it's thought you get crazy thoughts of, off the back of, of not explaining how you feel with someone. And before COVID and then even after COVID. So before COVID, we used to do workshops. You know, there was 250 blokes in the room. And then looking around going, I had no idea how many people were going through the same stuff as me. I said, we're actually one big pack of, dif of dysfunction. You know what I mean? We just haven't got the answers. We're going to throw away mm. perfect. We're going to throw away social media and make out, you know what? We're all bumbling through and that's all right. There are some days that are really, really hard and other days you cruise through them. Just life throws all this stuff at you, right? So for me, it's all around about normalizing by talking about mental fitness. It will help normalize it. But even through the pivot we had to do with technology and putting everything online, you know, chats like we have now, um, that we're doing right now. I mean, there's so many people on our chats. There's so many people on our workshops, you know, hundreds of people from all around the world and everyone's going through stuff. It makes it easier to cope when you realise you're not the only one going through stuff. But the only way you'll ever know that is if you put yourself out there and be open, honest and vulnerable and, uh, and, and throw away perfect. So that's all part of that process that we need to go through. I'm 52 in December. You guys are young guys. So it's your generation going to be teaching my generation and your kids are going to be hopefully the ones that walk through the door and say to mum and dad, I've had a tough day today. Can I talk to you about it? Rather than buttoning your lip and just soldiering on and just having mm -hmm. all this emotion build up and pushing it down. Like I was taught by my dad and he was taught by my granddad. You know, that we know now that that's got us where we are. The number one way to die is an Australian male. So we're not doing it anymore. Like I said, line in the sand. You guys are going to be teaching and your kids are going to be teaching us where to go in the future. One, one thing that I've come across quite a bit in me and Leroy's little journey in terms of us trying to help each other is that a lot of young adults that we come across, uh, they haven't come across something that, that oh, I find in that this is, these times are presenting the first real challenge the first real emotional burden to carry on their shoulders. And they're all kind of coming into this all at the same time. And it's very confusing because the, the, the first time is always just a shock. You have no idea how you're going to respond. And I know for me, I was, I was blown away. Like I, I hadn't really faced anything, you know, over, you know, very emotionally overwhelming. And then all of a sudden I've just got this wave of just, you know, just slapping you across the face. <laughs> and I, I was, I was lucky enough to have, you know, Leroy coming along a, a similar path, but with so many people having it being their first time taking on something really challenging, they haven't had the experience of knowing how to deal with it or how to reach out to their friends. So is there anything that you would be able to advise us younger adults on to be able to help 
pick out our friends that are really struggling, but don't know that they may, that they might be having a hard time. Yeah. I mean, for me, it is very difficult. Blokes are really good at putting on the mask and making out that everything's okay. So where I'm, where I'm coming from, Sam is coming from the other way is actually everyone learning from us how to go to a friend and say, I'm struggling. Cause mm -hmm. I think it's not working the other way around. You sitting there looking at your group of mates trying to work out, okay, Leroy, I spoke to him yesterday. He seems on a decent path now. But what about Tom over here? What about Ben? What about Sally? Whoever it might be. And I'm, they, then I don't know if they're your friends or not, but my, 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 my point is it's bloody hard for you dealing with your own stuff and looking after everyone else. So what it really means, what I, we're trying to do is man up and speak up and actually turn up and go, you know what, Sam Leroy, um, I'm going through a bit of a tough time at the moment, boys, and I'd love you to be part of my team to try to get, to try to get through it. That's what we really want. And that's going to take time and effort. It's going to take, a generation perhaps. So it's turning it around the other way. I had a mate of mine in my WhatsApp group the other day and we've been chatting away and we're in New South Wales. So we've been able to have a walk and go to a cafe and so forth. And he said to me, I've been really struggling the last three weeks and no one's picked up on it. And I said, mate, us blokes, we're not good at that. Like we just, it's not what we get. Well, what are you talking about with Gotcha for Life? I'm like, what I'm talking about at Gotcha for Life is you having the nuts you having the bravery to actually turn up to the group and say it to everyone or just grab me or grab one of the lads and say, hey, I wouldn't mind having a cup of tea after the walk, just you and I, because I'm going through some stuff. That's what Gotcha for Life's about, is you actually having the balls to man up and speak up rather than man up and shut up, which is what we've been told to do all our lives. So he's like, oh, right. I said, because us blokes, when we all get together in that situation, that might be the one time that a lot of us are actually really happy for the for the day mm. because we're just completely like, oh, I can completely chill, take the mask off and just talk banter and talk rubbish about sport and politics and whatever it might be. It's just a chance to just normalise life for a bit. So people aren't sitting there looking around to see if people, you know, are struggling or not. If you're really struggling and you show it, then of course we'll pick it up. But most of the time we won't. So... It's really about going the other way around, Sam, and saying, saying to your group of friends or to anyone listening to us, if you're going through something, don't worry alone. Tell someone about it, and then you'll be able to start the process of healing. Yeah, that that approach makes far more sense than than, <laughs> than my approach. I, I realise, and I guess that's one thing I I think I I struggle with is it can't. You know, I guess I can't. I can't change people. I can help them change. I can give them the tools, but it can't be me that, that flicks the switch, you know, to get them to speak up and, and it needs to come from them. And I think, yeah, I think you're spot on in, in, in that sense. But, but Sam, they need, they need to learn how to do it. So it's difficult, right? We don't go to school and learn this stuff. So it's through the, the workshops that I put on through workshops or, or information that people get listening to your podcast it is stuff that they look up on Google. There's a whole range of stuff out there, but you've got to find the thing that works for you. But like, as I said to Leroy before, normalizing it, talking about mental fitness, all of a sudden you go, oh, so everyone's going, everyone's at a different level. That's right. It's not like you're mentally healthy or you're not mentally healthy. You know, we're on a scale between one and 10 now. So let's call it mental fitness, just like our physical fitness. You can't turn up at the gym do one workout and go, oh, I'm ready to go and do a marathon. It's going to take months of grind, your muscles hurting, a bit of financial hit because you need to keep paying month after month after month. You have to go to a class that's uncomfortable. You can't just sit there and do a little bit of cycling and a little bit of rowing because that's something you can cope with. You're going to have to go through all the machines. You're going to have to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel vulnerable. So that's what happens physically. Well, the same thing's going to happen mentally and properly probably even more. So let's just realize that and then get stuck into the grind and go for it. So in terms of like a, a week by week basis, because like I, you know, me and Lyra love being active and we love making a, you know, a training program. Yeah. Is there something that you would recommend to, well, to us to that we can, you know, we can plan week by week to work towards improving our mental fitness. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing I tell you is don't worry alone. So write that right at the top. So anything you're worrying about, you're going to make sure that you tell each other as soon as it happens. 
whether that's on a FaceTime call, a text message, an email, an actual phone call. Do you realise these phones, guys, you can actually speak to each other if you want to. I know you young people <laughs> tend to, to do it in every possible way, but I've found technology to be wonderful to keep everyone together through the pandemic. There's no doubt we've been absolutely challenged and there's people doing a lot tougher, especially in Victoria at the moment. Anyone listening to us, uh, shout out to you and hopefully the next couple of weeks we'll see you downgraded again so you can start getting out and about. But the thing is technology has stood up it really, really has. So there's no excuse now to be isolated. You can be physically isolated, but not actually isolated. So for me, you guys should have right across the top of your timetable, do not worry alone. So we're going to make sure that we contact each other and let each other know. But not only that, don't keep, don't keep your friendship and the way you love each other to yourselves. Make sure that you involve all your other friends as well in it as well. So really expand your, your gym session out to a few other people as well. I've got about 10 in my crew that I just, and they're from all around the world. And we've got a WhatsApp group and we just, we are talking crap. We are talking BS, but we are talking love and family and things we're worried about. And it's all in between. And it's people waking up at various times. And I'm going, if you wake up and you feel like crap, send something to the WhatsApp. There'll be someone up in some part of the world that can ring you, look after you, or at least you can go one-on-one -on -one with if you want to. So that's the first thing. Secondly, the actual to fitness are pretty simple. You need to actually have that open, honest and vulnerable conversation. You need to tell people how you feel. And sometimes that's tougher than absolutely anything. It's tougher than going for a run for most people. So the, the language you use, the context you use, the conversation is all key you can have water running out of your eyes in tears you can have snot running out of your nose you can literally spend minutes in total silence because you don't know what else to say you know that feeling where you're just so emotional you can't actually get the words out mm. and what most Aussies do is we apologize for that sorry 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 and that person just wants you to come you know it's just, just wants you to say what you need to say the most important thing about mental fitness is not only just saying what's in your head, but on the other side of it is being a good listener. And we're terrible as listeners as a general rule, most blokes. And as you get older, we get worse and worse as well. So there are things to work on, working on having that open, honest, vulnerable conversation, but also being a really good listener. And that's really, really absolutely key. And then it's funny when we use the word fitness, the physical fitness and the mental fitness work beautifully together. If you get up in the morning and have a good routine and you go for a walk or go for a run or you get yourself out and about and then you eat healthy and then you have those open, honest, vulnerable conversations or on the other side, being a good listener to that, that sets you up so beautifully for the day and it just makes you feel that you're not alone. Because I honestly believe that suicide is a death of loneliness. You feel like you've got a partner in crime. You've got someone who loves you and cares for you and, and that knows shit that's going on. You don't have to tell everyone your stuff but telling someone your stuff, like you guys have got your for life buddies. You've got yourself, you know, no, no one is, um, is going to judge you. They're just going to love you no matter what. And they're going to know where the skeletons are buried. There's nothing better in life to know you've got a proper brother. And that's what you guys are. And hopefully listeners out there might make a checklist now as they're listening, go right. Who are the people in my life that I could turn from a mate into a friend? Cause we talk about mates all the time in this country, but, we're not very good at it, really. Like, we're good at getting on the pierce. We're good at watching a sporting match. But we're actually not very good at actually sitting in awkward silence and asking someone how they truly are. We might ask them, and then as soon as they say they're fine, they go, yeah, I'm fine too. And the conversation is over in three seconds. That's not true friendship. True friendship is actually going, hey, I've got your back. Tell me what's going on in your mind. Anything bothering you? Can I help you with anything? That sort of stuff. And having the person answer back is key so there's lots to work on there guys and mm. it's not easy to do it and people go oh, asking someone out they're okay that's easy yeah we're listening to the answer and then actually asking the second third and fourth questions that's key yeah because you know, are you okay is fine but we need to go a bit deeper than that as you guys have shown through your friendship and the fact now that you're trying to help others you're doing this because you know that you needed to go deeper for it so if if we take it into a, an, an example scenario, because I know this is, this is a, a very classic scenario I think a lot of young adults will find themselves in. They're sitting around with their mates having some drinks 
you know, mm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the real heroes. And you're, everyone's engaging and having a great time, but there's, there's not really emphasis on how everyone's going. It's more of like a, you know, let's forget how this week was and let's just make this weekend fun. And then you're kind of diving back down to the deep end the next week. How do you think we can help young adults shift away from this escapism type of drinking and start to become more of like a having fun and, and starting to break down, uh, you know, problems and actually address them instead of running away from them? It's, it's, it's banter. So we've got to get away from banter at some stage. So Australians live in banter. Americans live in banter. Um, people in the UK live in banter. And we've got the same similar dramas that, that they have in terms of mental fitness levels and suicide levels. So there's something there. And the science is telling us at some stage you need to get away from banter. So that escapism you spoke about, Sam, is I, I, I lob that down as banter. So at some stage, because people that I go and see, they say, I don't want to be that bloke that drags everyone down. Mm. I don't want to be that person that does that. It's like, you're actually not that person. You don't have to stand up in the middle of that Sunday session and go, hey, boys, I'm going through some stuff. Like, if you want to and you've got the ticket to do it, absolutely go for it. But it's grabbing one of those guys. So looking around the room and going, which one of these guys is my guy? And you text them that night and said, I had a great time this Savo, just wondering if we could catch up for a coffee in the morning. And that is the person you have the open, honest and vulnerable conversation with. And then eventually that person is listening, they're learning stuff, you do the odd workshop. And all of a sudden that friendship builds from just banter land, having beers and sessions to something a little bit deeper, similar to what you've got with Leroy, Sam, and similar to what I've got with my mates, but that's taken time and effort to do it. So then that friendship group all of a sudden changes. And that's what I'm saying, this is not gonna happen overnight. But if we slowly but surely chip away at it, we will change it. And the next few generations will get to the stage where these conversations are a little bit more normal. So that is the absolute key. Slowly but surely do it. If a bloke walks into a group and he's got the ticket to go, you know what, boys, our mateship is on such a superficial bullshit banter level. I want to take it to another level. I love you guys. And I, if you've got that in you to do that, then go for it. But be, be ready for a little bit of what the hell is this? You're changing my relationship. I'm not comfortable with it, blah, blah, blah. Well, you'll soon find out the people that want to go with you or you need to educate the ones that don't want to go with you. That's okay as well. I certainly spent a bit of time in the last five years in my life. I'm, like I said, 52 coming up. I was 47 and I wasn't talking like this at all. So you're never too late to learn this stuff and you've got to give people time because they'll learn it in their own particular way over a certain period of time where you and I and Leroy we're probably there already. You know, we live in this space. We enjoy this space. We think this is a space to be in. Well, it's going to take time to bring everyone else with us. And we've got to be patient and understand that everyone's different. Everyone's got their own stuff that they're dealing with and their own backgrounds to deal with as well. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's, it's good that you say that um, that change from banter as you get older. Well, like I've noticed that definitely from high school because high school is like the banter. That's the place of banter. That's yeah. where if you say anything especially in a boys' school, you're going to get like, you know, the sharks are going to come for you. <laughs> Hammer time. Do you, like with Gotcha for Life, do you think a target group to like really impact change would be those kids in high school? Definitely. And even, even, even younger Leroy. Um, we're looking at the moment at a, um, at a workshop that can go into primary school. Because, you know, it's very early that, that kids are starting to be told what the man box is and the rules that, that are set up for the man box compared to perhaps what they were getting from home when they were little before they went to school. So, you know, I definitely think at the moment we're sort of around that 14, 15, 16 mark. I think, it, I think research will tell us that we need to go even younger than that. But, you know, even at, even at 13, 14, 15, 16, that's, a, that's key times. Um, and depending on if you've got older brothers and stuff, you might already be older, if you know what I mean. And if you're the oldest and you've, got, and you've got younger kids, then you may not be quite as old as. So it's a difficult one. Everyone grows up and matures at different ages. But if we can start changing the rules on what it takes to be a man and a woman around that age, then it might help some people make some decisions so they don't go down that sort of traditional path, which is a stereotype, which is pretty hard to live up to. Um, trying to live up to a typical Australian male is hard, as, as the stats are proving. And I think that can take such a toll 
on, I guess, oh. more, men more specifically on seeing, you know, I think this is where social media uh, plays a big role. We see the 1%, see the 1% that everyone wants to be like, you know, and that, that's all, that's all you really get shown. And it's, it's, it takes your toll thinking I'm not like this. I'm not good enough. And yeah. someone I was, I was looking after a, a client the other day and she was giving me some, she was giving me some advice on uh, getting ready for a date <laughs> that was coming up and uh, her, her one piece you, of advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. It went well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. That's good. Um, the other person on the, would the other person on the date think the same way? Hmm. Well, can we listen to this? That's too. another question. <laughs> time well, yeah, time uh, will tell. Time will tell. I think we'll find out. Um, and what she what she told me to keep reminding yourself is that you are enough. If if ever you're at a point where you start getting a bit nervous or flustered, you just you just remind yourself, I I am enough. I don't need to keep chasing this constant thing that is really hard to obtain. Mm. And just being able to be comfortable in your own shoes, I think was, was, was really, you know, it was a nice thing to be able to think about. Absolutely. I remember through the man up program, we did a date, we had a dating night, like a speed dating night. And I'm, I've been married boys, 26, 26 years this year. So I've been with the same lady for 30 years. Yeah. Um, and I said to my wife, we've got this dating thing. You, you sweep with me going. I'm not going to date them, but I'm going to play it if I'm a single bloke. And she's like, <laughs> you just totally be yourself. There's so many blokes that walked in like you and older that had these preconceived ideas on what, the girl, what they thought the girls wanted. You know, they needed to have a decent career. They needed to have their shit together. They needed to be a certain, you know, a seven plus out of 10, all this sort of stuff. Really what the girls wanted was just someone who was real open and honest and i got all these i got all these dates which of course i didn't go on and i'm no i'm no spring chicken and i'm not the best looking bloke on the planet either so <laughs> i'm a bit of an all-rounder but all these really good looking blokes got no dates because the girls felt that they were saying what the boys were saying what they thought the girls wanted to hear mm. and it just proved to everyone that masculinity is very different we don't have to be that I've got all the answers. She'll be right, mate, guy. Um, you can literally say, hey, look, you know, this is who I am and I'm working on myself. And, and girls get that. They understand it. And then they, at least they know what they're working with rather than, you know, buying the Mercedes and then realizing when they get home, it's a Hyundai. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a cheeky badge swap, though. You know, it's a... No, no. Uh, go for it, Sammy, <laughs> if you can get away with it. But eventually, eventually you're going to have to say it's a Hyundai. <laughs> and there's True, nothing yeah. saying that you won't work yourself up up to something more luxury either you know that's the thing we're, we're just we're a work in progress right i'm 52 i'm i'm a work in progress you're, you're going to see some stuff thrown at you in your next 20 30 years before you get to my age and you're like well that's i didn't expect that to happen just like covid this year so mm. just be open and vulnerable and and not make out that we've got all the answers because it it's just real. Why don't we, why can't we be real? Why can't we throw away perfect? Mm. Well, Gus, one of the, like the biggest thing about our podcast is we're trying to push self-development and start the process early in, in the lives of young adults, especially. So that being said, I'm aware you're, um, you, you host a morning show and you've done, you've obviously done quite a lot of different work. So what are some things you do for your own self-development so you can keep being better the next day, the next year? Well, I've got to say, Leroy, I wasn't always this way. I've probably learned to be better in terms of working stuff out in the last five or six years. So the Man Up program for me was really important. I probably walked around in a bit of a bubble feeling like, you know, I've got my shit together. You know, I was doing breakfast radio, wife and three children, living in the burbs, driving a nice car, you know, everything seemed to be going along nicely. And then... I suppose I realized once I opened my mind and eyes and ears up to being educated again, um, I realized how much, how sheltered I was and how much I needed to, to learn, not only for myself, but for my own children and my own relationship with my wife and stuff. So I think a lot of Aussie blokes sort of find their, they settle, they find their spot and they sort of settle and they bounce around and life can be okay. But I suppose, 
I was given an opportunity to, to learn. And that meant that I had to chuck away some stuff that I'd already learned and I needed to have some inner thinking about whether or not, whether or not I'd actually nailed down my life the way that I thought I had. So I had to be open, honest and vulnerable. And I, and I was, and I realized then that my relationships could be better, not only with my wife, but with my children and with mates of mine. And I need to go deeper and I need to maybe flush out a few relationships and get rid of them because they were a bit toxic or I was the one giving everything and, and I wasn't getting a lot back. So, you know, nothing wrong with having a look at yourself um, quite regularly and trying to work out whether or not you're on the right path or not. What most people I think tend to do is go, I've got myself a five year plan. I reckon that five year plan should be more like a one year plan. Keep having a look at yourself, where you're going, who's who you're attracting to you in terms of your friends and your community and, and whether or not you're on the right path in terms of, you know, what you're going to do work-wise. <coughs> well said. Mm. Yeah, I think self-development is something that uh, I, there's no particular age. You know, me and Leroy kind of come across it, uh, you know, more by chance and just, you know, yapping about it for hours on end. And then, you know, we, we people seem to start this, this process or this journey or this, you know, looking inside themselves a little bit deeper at totally different times for everybody. And there seems to be no set number of which, of which, you know, the, I guess a general performer would, would fit into. I think more people are doing it, Sam, younger now than they were before. I think the, you know, is that there's a big thing, you know, you guys would have heard it midlife crisis, you know, forties tends to be a time where people look back and go, you know, did I really do what I expected to do when I was 18 or started uni or left uni or start a trade or whatever you decide. The thing is that the thought of where we're going to be at 40 is made with guys of your age. And how could you possibly really know what's going to happen? Plus mm. it's just too difficult to do that. And it's you're using an old traditional stereotype to go, right at 40, I want to be married, have a couple of kids, have gone overseas, done a few trips, got this job, being a partner. And it's like, it's like, whoa, how the, how the F would, I was going to, sorry, I don't know if that's a swear, <laughs> swearing podcast, but how in the F would you possibly know you're setting up your cells for huge disappointment if you don't get there based on really a child's way of looking at life. So hmm. everyone just relax, take it easy, take your time, work stuff out, work on yourself, work out who you truly are and, and then take it from there. That's what I've been telling my children. My, I've got two, one at uni, one meant to do a gap year this year. I've got one, Abby, who's doing year 11, about to go into year 12. And I'm like, just take the pressure off. Just go enjoy yourself, meet some good friends, plan some trips, hope COVID's gone so you can do that. You know, and we'll look at life when you're closer to 20. You know, that's, that's, that's okay. Mm. You know, why do you need to have everything worked out and locked in? It's just madness to me to think that we need to put all these plans in place for the rest of your life when you're just literally a child. Yeah, the, the world's always changing. So you may as well just be happy in the now. That's right. Just you and Leroy and your new friend, whoever they are. <laughs> <laughs> what about I'm you, a... Leroy? Where are you? Where are you? Situated. Uh, I, I have a. I, where am I situated? <laughs> yeah, I, and then the next question was, who are you dating? <laughs> I have a girlfriend, and it's actually our uh, year anniversary in two weeks' time. So, and are you, are you, can you see each other, or are you in COVID lockdown? Oh or? no, no, we can see each other. We live very close to each other, so it's been COVID has been very nice for that. I've had right. a lot. Of what are you doing for people. your What are you doing for your one year anniversary? Ooh, probably going to like down south a farm and just sort of hang around for four days i don't know maybe skydive go to the beach a I lot think, i think you need to come up with a better plan than that yeah if she asks i agree i've given my i've given my little bit into chipping i've got these messages about a week ago like my anniversary is kind of what do i do i was like i don't, I don't know <laughs> I mean, just let's go south, babe, and hang around for four days. Probably won't cut it, brother. You know what I mean? You've got to, oh, babe, we're going down south, this beautiful little farm. I've got so many things planned. And every day there'll be a new surprise. Because you know what? In the year that we've been together, it's literally been the best year of my life. 
and I want to make sure you have the best four days. Come up with something like that, and then you can still make up all the bullshit afterwards. But that's the key. Gus, I just want to say before we, we end up soon, thanks for helping me dig a nice big hole for myself that I will most likely have to <laughs> unexplain out of, but that's a, a future sound problem. We'll, we'll deal with that when it comes. But look, hey, I just want to good. say thanks. Thanks so much for coming on the show. You know, you've, you, you, you're, you're fighting for such noble cause and we, you know, me and Leroy love, love to learn. And if we can help take this message to other young adults that are struggling in their own little battles too, then you know, we've, we've ticked off, to. I guess, what we received, what we set out to do. Mental Sam, it's been a pleasure, Leroy, place. an absolute pleasure as well. <laughs> Thank you boys for having me. And um, if you ever needed me again, just, just give me a shout out, but um, just keep what you keep doing what you're doing. Realize that when you're working in this sort of preventable space, it's difficult to know sometimes whether you're doing a good job or not, but literally I promise you, you are, you know, I've heard some of the stuff and it's just, it's got to come from you guys. It's got to come from people that resonate with you guys and understand what you people are going through. When I say you people, I mean youngsters because you can only get a certain amount of information from oldies like us. So keep doing what you're doing boys and best of luck with your relationships. And uh, I look forward to it. Thanks very much guys. Have a good one.